Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Piper Report. Forgive me if I sound kind of uh, phlegmatic. I had surgery this morning, and I'm still kind of, I guess you could say, under the weather from the um, anesthesia and whatnot. But I kind of want to go over something that I just saw on TV a little bit ago. Trump met with a bunch of different executives in the video game industry to talk about violence in the video game industry and how it could be how it could be correlated to an uptake in crime in juvenile offenders and <laughs> this is just it's no it's no i mean i understand i can see where trump is coming from doing this but we cannot blame the actions of a few on externalities and social influences such as video games for instance i mean there have been studies for instance one of them was in 2014 where a bunch of child or a bunch of pediatricians and a bunch of parents said that they believe that children playing video games in their youth will have a much more higher chance of adopting aggressive and violent behavior in their lifetime but then you could also argue that well the amount of video games especially video games that have violence in them has actually been increasing over the years and juvenile crime and violent offenders in juvenile crime have actually dropped significantly i don't see it i mean you cannot blame the actions of playing video games you cannot find this common link between playing violent video games and violence in general i mean i never had any appeal to do mushrooms but i made sure that mario always ate his mushroom <laughs> no but on a more serious note is that i mean i played a lot of halo growing up and i played a lot of uh, bond and you know violent video games and now that's just me i never really felt any um any predisposition towards violence but we just have to blame it on the individual. Guns didn't kill people, it was the individual. Video games did not kill people, it was the individual. I mean, when you try to branch out and you try to blame the actions on externalities, then you are losing the argument in general because you cannot do that. First off, there already has been a court case to essentially ban violent video games, and the Supreme Court ruled that it was actually under the First Amendment. It was under the purview of the First Amendment for businesses to create those kinds of video games. What's more, for the sake of argument, if we would all of a sudden ban all violent video games, well, then you couldn't stop there. You'd have to keep on. You'd have to basically ban all violent movies. You'd have to ban any kind of movie that has any type of violence in it, or any type of fighting in it, any type of shooting in it. You might have to ban even PG and PG-13 type movies that have violence in it. And that's when you really, really are starting to affect the First Amendment. And pretty soon, now if we would continue on this trajectory, say we you know ban violent video games, and then we ban violent movies, and then violent TV shows, and then blah, 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 blah. Pretty soon you have created a society that is predicated upon the moral, the moral righteousness of those in power. That is, whoever is in power or whoever has the most amount of power in the government has the final say on what can be seen, what can be released to the general public. And when you have that type of situation, then you have created thought police. You have created thought police because what you are doing is you are giving people you are giving somebody in power the right. You are giving somebody in power the ability to dictate what you can and cannot see, what video games you can and cannot play. And that is a very, very slippery slope because that is authoritarianism. Likewise, you can argue with this with the porn industry too. I mean, a lot of people think that porn industry, or rather those who watch porn, that can really have a dire effect just on their overall consciousness in terms of political society and how society functions. But the same thing can be said is other people who are determining what you can and cannot watch. And if you keep on this slippery slope, then you're falling into a country that's no longer predicated upon freedom. 
you're falling into a country that is that where your freedom is preconditioned on whoever is in power determines. And you just cannot have that in a free society. That is not a free society when that happens. So, I mean, I can see it from an outsider's point of view. Basically, Trump, you know, talking to video game executives about the possibilities that there could be um, a direct link or a correlation between violence in real life and violent video games. Of course, I don't see it, and most studies fall apart when you kind of dig into them. So I can I can see why he's doing it, but if he would even attempt to do something about it, then he would be basically contradicting the founding principles of this country. What's more, he would basically have to shut down a lot of the software development companies, a lot of the video, ga- the video game developing con- uh, companies that are creating these games. And when you have the state control the economy, then you have fascism. When you have the state determining what company can create what, when, and why? You have fascism. Now, I'm not saying Trump is a fascist. Again, I see why he's doing this. He kind of maybe wants to give give credence to the fact that he is looking at different ways to to try to determine why why we do see gun crimes, even though mass shootings are not as they're not as as severe and as common as people are led to believe. There was a recent study, uh, I think by Northeastern University, basically showing that the amount of mass shootings happened by AR-15s has actually been decreasing over the years. It is not an epidemic, as we are led to believe. And the fault lies within the shooter alone. Not video games he played when he was growing up, not movies he went to when he was you know, a teenager, not movies he rented, not if he was at home or she was at home watching porn all day. I mean, you cannot do that. You cannot blame it on externalities. And so it's, it's good Trump's discussing about this, but he should not do anything about this. He should not try to stop these video games from being created. He should not try to stop these movies from being produced and distributed because that is not up to him. That is not under his purview. And there is this no, there is no evidence that doing that would even work. Because there's no just direct tie, there's no direct correlation that those, those items, that those, those aspects of society can actually lead to more gun violence and more crime. So, so yeah, maybe this just kind of just show, to kind of get the people to see that he wants to talk about gun crime in the country and he wants to explore new avenues but that's all it should be just an exploration if that exploration actually leads to action then we have a problem then we have a problem because that is against the first amendment and that is basically um fascism because the state would be determining what video game companies can and cannot make so it's a slippery slope if we go that route so i think it's just trump just basically kind of want people to see that he is taking this seriously. That is, he is taking the amount of gun crime seriously, although the amount of gun crime of AR-15 isn't actually that much, not as much as people are saying. But So I think it's just for show right now, and it's good. Maybe he might gain some support by it, but as long as he doesn't actually try to implement any of the things he is talking about right now, especially in terms of how video game violence could lead to real-life violence, and thus maybe we should get rid of violence in video games. As long as he doesn't do that, this is kind of, this doesn't matter. This is just to kind of try to garner more um, popular support over the gun issue. So we'll see what happens as the days progress. I don't really see this going anywhere. I mean, because Trump cannot actually unilaterally say that this company cannot produce these types of video games. This company cannot produce these types of movies. It's just, it's not under the president's power. So, but yeah, it's a slippery slope nonetheless, even talking about it. So, and I'm done.